The consulting industry, just like many other experience intensive industries, has a very structured career path. These roles and responsibilities, and the way that they are structured, are meant to teach newcomers both the theoretical and practical know-how required to fulfill their position. In this video of our consulting series, we will study the different roles and responsibilities that exist within a consulting firm, and what it would take for you to succeed in all of them. From business analyst to manager, there is a lot to learn at each step of the process. And regardless of where you are in your career, you will benefit from knowing about each of these roles. But first, let me thank you for watching Rebel Economics, with a channel focused on everything from economics and business to finance and investing. We're really happy to have you here. If you feel like you enjoy our content, consider subscribing. We have multiple videos all focused on consulting as well as many others in business and economics that may help you learn more about the economic and business world around us. And without further ado, let's jump into the first role. Business Analyst The role of Business Analyst is generally the one entry position for newcomers into the industry. Both for recent graduates as well as after that career change, this will most likely be the destination of those with little practical experience in the world of consulting. During your time as a business analyst, you will have a big opportunity to learn a lot about the technical and operational intricacies of whichever consulting branch you operate in. And also learn the basics about what a consultant does in a broader sense. As a BA, you will generally be a part of a larger group of analysts that work really close to the client and take responsibility for uncovering the client's needs with the support of more senior positions. It is also possible that you are brought in to participate directly in the problem-solving process, in which you will be required to translate the needs of the client into operational, measurable terms and come up with potential solutions. Skills that are very valued at this level of their career include data collection, good communication, precise writing, and willingness to learn and make mistakes in a secure environment. Coming up after your time as a VA, you will become a junior consultant, which is the next step in the consultancy ladder. This position is generally reached after three years as an analyst. However, in some smaller consultancies or for some particularly brilliant profiles, this might happen sooner. In this position, you will most likely be made responsible for taking the data provided by analysts and deriving solutions. It is expected that you come up with these solutions in a more formal and structured way than it was expected of you when you were an analyst. Whether or not you will be brought into the actual implementation of those solutions largely depends on the industry and the consulting branch that you choose. In management consulting, to give an example, the implementation of multi-year managerial reworkings may be the responsibility of more senior positions. Whereas in technical consulting, junior consultants are already expected to start implementing solutions. For example, in my own industry, I would say that junior Salesforce consultants are already responsible for implementing technical solutions outlined by an architect. It is possible, though not incredibly likely, that a certain degree of managerial experience will be required to reach the position of junior consultant as you will be made responsible for managing a group of analysts. This, however, tends to happen only in paper. Consultancies know that junior consultants have only had real experience as VAs, so they don't normally expect them to take over a team of business analysts or anything of the sort. But it might be possible that you are paired up with an analyst in a task where you're expected to be in charge. Skills that are very valued at junior level of a consulting career include the ability to interpret data and come up with solutions, a small degree of managerial know-how for the few occasions in which you might lead the implementation of a given task, the ability to spot processes and formulate hypotheses, and some form of consulting knowledge, such as understanding the workings of a given methodology, as well as taking part in sprints and other official meetings, like project kickoffs, and maybe even engage in the sales process. One step after your time as a junior consultant, you will be promoted to senior consultant. In technical consulting, this tends to happen after you have proven both extensive technical knowledge and a solid leadership and managerial ability. In management consulting, this process can vary, and it happens quite gradually, generally by being given more and more responsibility over a project as a junior consultant. 
senior consultants are a step beyond the juniors because of their experience and formal consulting knowledge. And they take the highest positions of responsibility within projects, which generally takes the form of project manager. This may also be considered a differentiated position in the hierarchy of the business that comes after your time as a senior consultant and not necessarily during. However, in my experience in IT consulting, generally the role of project manager would be given to you in small, relatively straightforward projects where they will allow you to cut your managerial teeth, as well as perfect the formal knowledge and the project methodology followed. As a project manager, you will ultimately be responsible for everything that goes on in the project, from its correct execution and client satisfaction to the quality of the documentation and management of both junior consultants and analysts. In technical consultancy, you will be responsible in tandem with the solution architect to come up with detailed descriptions of functionality to be implemented. It is also possible that, especially in later stages of your time as a senior consultant, certain input or managerial duties within the consulting firm will be asked of you. Skills that are very valued at this level of the career include extensive consulting knowledge about processes and good practices, advanced technical knowledge, though it is understandable that no one can know about everything, and in many cases, opportunities to delegate technical know-how to experts will arise especially as you take more and more responsibility as a project manager. Additionally, as you settle into the role, extensive project manager abilities as well as communicative and leadership know-how will supersede exclusively technical knowledge of the implemented project as the most desired attributes for you to showcase. And the final step that we will cover will be that of the manager, which is also called team leader in some industries. This position is reached after several years as a senior consultant, and at this level, you will be made responsible for a team of both junior and senior consultants. Your duty to them is to guide them and place them in projects where you think they will deliver the most value. You are no longer expected to take such an active part in the day-to-day -day of project execution, but are still responsible for them. Senior consultants and project managers within the team you lead will report to you and you ought to help them and support them in successfully completing the project. As a manager, your managerial experience will become your main asset. Technical knowledge will take a back seat in the progress of your career to a more strictly managerial position. It is also generally expected of managers to take an active role in the sales department, where they're generally responsible for closing large clients, as well as being engaged in the early stages of the process like during requirement gathering. Skills that are very valued at this level of your career will include extensive managerial experience, good abilities for selling the service to new potential clients, and a deep understanding of the value proposition offered by your company. And that is it. Those are the fundamental roles and positions that can be had in the world of consulting. Some people, myself included, enjoy the structured career path that tends to be at the core of many consulting firms. This not only gives consultants a clear evolution strategy with defined goals and metrics, but also ensures that generally no professional will be promoted without the know-how required to do a good job in its new position. Thank you for watching Rebel Economics. This video is part 4 of a series that explores the world of consulting. If you have not checked all of them up, I think you might enjoy to do so. The playlist is in the description and on the end screen. However, if you needed a palate cleanser after so much talk of career evolution, why not relax and learn about why everything coming out from Hollywood nowadays is a cinematic universe? And once again, thank you for picking Rebel Economics, and if you liked the video, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button. I will see you in the next one.